good morning in today's class let us study about the regions which are present in the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere first we'll draw the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere so is the frontal lobe and this is the occipital lobe you see part of the temporal lobe also here so the two cerebral hemispheres are connected in the midline by white matter which is a commissural which is made up of the commissural fiber called the corpus callosum this corpus callosum has got the following part we have the anterior end anterior end is bent like this and this bent part is called the genu little posteriorly and below the genu we have the rostrum rostrum so the rostrum and the genu will be forming the anterior aspect then it is made up of the trunk at last the splenium of corpus callosum so these are the parts of the corpus callosum which is connecting the two cerebral hemispheres so this rostral end will be ending in a white commissural fiber called the anterior commissure called the anterior commissure below the anterior commissure we have white white matter white fiber which is extending downwards and it will be ending in optic chiasma this is the optic chiasma this is the optic chiasma and this white fiber is called the lamina terminalis lamina terminalis so that is called the lamina terminalis now so from the splenium from the splenium the anterior end of the splenium there is white matter there is white fiber again a commissural fiber which is running anteriorly which is running postro anteriorly and it will be ending in front of a gap or a opening which is called the interventricular foramen inter ventricular foramen so this is the interventricular foramen which is connecting the lateral ventricle which is present behind this part so this part the two lateral ventricles are separated by again a septum called the septum pellicidum this septum pellicidum is extending between this fiber this the fornix and the corpus callosum you can see this is a septum pellicidum which is extending between the inferior aspect of the corpus callosum and the fornix so this septum is separating the two lateral ventricle which is present on either side so the both the lateral ventricles are separated by the septum called the septum pellicidum now the two lateral ventricles along with the, uh, the it is communicated with the third ventricle which is present here is communicating with the third ventricle by means of this foramen called the interventricular foramen so we should know about the interventricular foramen which is nothing but the connection between the two sides lateral ventricle along with the third ventricle now with the csf which is formed here inside the lateral ventricle is flowing out through this foramen to reach the third ventricle now below the fornix we have a mass of gray matter is extending up to the splenium and this bulged portion is called the thalamus this thalamus 
is attached to the opposite side thalamus by an adhesion which is present on the surface of the thalamus which is attaching the both sides thalamus. The two sides thalamus is attached in the midline by means of an adhesion called the interthalamic adhesions. Interthalamic adhesion or connexus. Interthalamic adhesion or interthalamic connexus. In front of the thalamus, we have this region called as the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus. So, this hypothalamus is separated from the thalamus by means of a sulcus. called the hypothalamic sulcus. Now, we know that the region between this area is called the third ventricle. So, between uh, behind the behind the septum pellicidum we have the lateral ventricles. There are two lateral ventricles which will be communicating through this interventricular foramen into the third ventricle. That is a space between the thalamus and the hypothalamus on either side. There is only one connection that is the interthalamic adhesion or the connexus. Next, this third ventricle is bounded anteriorly by, you can see this is the lamina terminalis which is ending in the optic chiasma. Then inferiorly the third ventricle is bounded by this is the pituitary gland hypophysis cerebri or the pituitary and from here we have the cerebral peduncle so this is the cerebral peduncle which forms the midbrain So this is the cerebral peduncle, this much is, this is the cerebral peduncle which will be continuing down, then it continues as pons. So with an anterior pulsed portion, you can see this is actually the pons, an anterior pulsed portion. Then there is a communication here between the third ventricle, so the CSF which is coming here which will be filling the third ventricle. Then this communication is called the cerebral aqueduct which will be communicating to the fourth ventricle which is present behind the pons and medulla. So this is actually the fourth ventricle. The posterior part of the third ventricle is bounded by a gland which is present located below the splenium called the pineal gland called the pineal gland and as we come down there are parts of midbrain which is the superior and the inferior colliculus. You can see the two colliculus, the superior colliculus and the inferior colliculus. So between the colliculus and the pineal gland, we have the posterior commission. So posteriorly, the third ventricle is bounded by the pineal gland, then the posterior commissure. So this is the posterior boundary of the third ventricle. Okay. So this is about the medial part in the midline. Next, we have to learn about the salsae and gyri which is present in the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere. Now, we had redrawn the medial surface without any markings. We will revise a little bit. This is the corpus callosum. We have the anterior commissure. We have the lamina terminalis. We have the optic chiasma. We have the pituitary gland here. We have the midbrain, pons and medulla. 
can see there will be this is a fornix so this is a fornix there will be intraventricular foramen here which will be communicating between the lateral ventricle behind the septum pellucidum here to the third ventricle here we have the thalamus this area is the hypothalamus and hypothalamic sulcus which is present is separating the thalamus and the hypothalamus and we have interthalamic adhesions here then this area is the third ventricle which is communicating to the fourth ventricle by means of aqueduct aqueduct of sylvius now so this area is the midbrain you can see midbrain you can see the colliculus next we can see the pons and then the medulla. So behind the pons and the medulla here we have the cerebellum with the fourth ventricle. So these are the parts we have already discussed about this. Next we will go into the sulci and gyri which is present in the super, uh, medial aspect. First we need to know about the first sulcus which is passing just over the corpus callosum called the callosal sulcus. So this sulcus sulcus I will represent with green color. So this sulcus is called the callosal sulcus which is running over the corpus callosum. So that is a callosal sulcus. Just over the callosal sulcus in a similar fashion from anterior to posterior we have another sulcus which is going parallel to it and it will be ending in an upturn curve behind this sulcus which is cutting the midline it's cutting the midline that is a supra medial border so which sulcus is this this is actually the central sulcus which is prominently seen in the medial surface uh, in the uh, supra, uh, superior lateral aspect of the brain. So superolateral aspect of the brain we can see a very prominent sulcus that is the central sulcus we can see only the end of it here. So this is actually the sulcus which is running parallel to the callosal sulcus and it is called cingulate sulcus. Cingulate sulcus. So this is called cingulate sulcus. So this singular sulcus has got one more small sulcus and a small ramus which will be extending just before, just before the central sulcus. So now we have one more small ramus of the singular sulcus we can see which is extending before the, in, uh, before the central sulcus. So this entire thing is the singular sulcus. So around the central sulcus, now we have an area which is enclosed here between the upturned end and this additional sulcus of the cingulate sulcus. And this area is called the paracentral lobule. Paracentral lobule. Now Related to these two sulcus, we can study two more gyrus. So, first one over the callosal sulcus, we have and the cingulate between the callosal sulcus and the cingulate sulcus, we have cingulate gyrus. Cingulate gyrus. So, above the cingulate sulcus, or we can tell above the cingulate sulcus and between, so between the cingulate sulcus and the border the supramedial border, we have the medial frontal gyrus, have the medial frontal gyrus. So these are the gyrus which are related to these two sulcus. The posterior part has two prominent sulcus, one extending just from uh, it will not touch the splenium just before the splenium just just uh, from the end of the splenium a little space after a little space a prominent sulcus goes towards the occipital pole goes towards the 
occipital pole and this sulcus is called calcarine sulcus and there is one more sulcus which starts little from a little distance from the origin of little distance from the origin of calcarine sulcus and it goes and it goes to divide the parietal from the occipital lobe goes to divide the parietal from the occipital lobe and this is called the parieto occipital sulcus this is called parieto occipital sulcus now between these two sulcus we have a triangular area called the cuneus we have a triangular area called the cuneus next in front of the cuneus in front of the cuneus this parietal lobe is divided by a sulcus which is running just parallel to that of the splenium end the splenium of the corpus callosum and this sulcus is called supra splenial sulcus supra splenial sulcus supra splenial sulcus since it is present above the splenium so this sulcus is dividing the parietal lobe into two region on its medial aspect this upper part which is in front of the cuneus is called precuneus and the lower part or which is close to the splenium is actually the continuation of the cingulate gyrus so the cingulate gyrus the continuation is going just up to the splenium so this is the entire thing is the cingulate gyrus and above the suprasplenial sulcus we have precuneus a small space which is located in front of the start of the calcarine sulcus here this is called the isthmus this area is called the isthmus so these are the parts we can these are sulci and gyri which are present in the medial aspect of the cerebral hemisphere so we saw all the parts which are present in the medial aspect of the cerebral hemisphere in our next video we will study the medial aspect using a specimen thank you